Welcome to Galatians part one. In this Galatians uh, series, I'm gonna just week by week, as long as it takes, um, go through uh, my perspective on Galatians. And as I do that, I think it might be important for you to know that this is not a scholarly uh, set of videos, and I'm not gonna take forever to do it. Um, I'm expecting probably five or six weeks max. Uh, I'm not gonna record a video next week because my older son is getting married and uh, I would like, want to put all my attention there. That being said, uh, I do want to tell you who has been my, um, you know, I've, I guess I'm influenced by people who agree with me and people who don't agree with me, but people that I have found uh, particularly helpful are James Dunn, E.P. Sanders, Mark Nanos, uh, Tim Haig, Daniel Boyerin, and uh, D. Thomas Lancaster. Uh, no, I do not agree with all of their conclusions, but they have given me frameworks by which I might reasonably understand uh, Galatians and what it means to follow the Torah and why uh, Jesus didn't do away with the Torah, nor does Paul support that and so forth. Why the controversy with the uh, book of Galatians? I would say that there is a theological controversy and... I'm just gonna call it a charismatic controversy because I don't really know what to call it. Uh, there are a lot of verses that would highlight the theological controversy, but I'm just going to choose Galatians 3.13. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. There's different verses that you can pull out from Galatians that seem to say that we shouldn't follow the thing and that it's a curse and that, you know, why in the world are we trying to be justified in that way? And, and I agree, we, wouldn't, we should not be just, we, we cannot be justified by following the law. And then on the charismatic, uh, you know, framework, uh, chapter 5, verse 18 says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. All right, so notice the terminology of spirit. And when I grew up, it was kind of like that. Why do I need to know all the um, jots and tittles of the law if I was totally in love with Jesus? I'm following Jesus on a moment by moment basis. I'm gonna say something straight up. This is an immature thought process. It is good to walk in the spirit. It is good to um, operate in the spirit. I am not a cessationist, and so I see in the scripture that the supernatural gifting still lead on into today, but I've also seen it abused, I've seen it misused, you know, and so forth. But I think that to walk in the Spirit, that should, because the Spirit is of Yahweh, of God, that should be utterly congruent with the scriptures. And so for anyone to say that they're walking in the spirit and deny just the, 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 the truth of the scriptures and what God has told us basic obedience is, um, is for me really problematic. So people, walk in the spirit. But if you're walking in the spirit is um, somehow at odds with being obedient, um, that's a problem. And so I would just say, you know, let's be mature in the Lord as well. Another thing that Tim Haig brings up that I think is really important is the idea of when was Galatians written? Was it written before the Jerusalem Council, after the Jerusalem Council? And it would depend on how you look at the data, um, what missionary journey was Paul on, and so forth. Uh, Tim Haig, I think, is, is um, makes a good argument that, the, that this uh, situation in Galatians is uh, actually before the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15. And I'm going to say I'm not going to uh, try to prove one way or the other. I'm going to say that it is close and that the controversy going on in Galatians is uh, essentially the same as what was going on in Acts 15, although Acts 15 does deal with the controversy with more specificity. So I'll just leave that there. So when you get to Galatians 2, what you'll find is it is the same issue. It is a matter of how do we uh, uh, 
correlate that with the controversy in Acts 15. Now, I'm going to leave a card up here on my take on Acts 15. Um, it'll be the long version, so you can look at that uh, when you want. But uh, the question posed in Acts 15.1, and this is right out of uh, Haig's commentary, is whether or not a non-Jew needed to gain the status of Jew through the rabbinic ritual of the proselyte in, in order to be counted as saved. So. I think it's important for you to know that in the book of Galatians, when the Apostle Paul refers to circumcision or circumcised, he's not talking about the, uh, the, the law given about circumcision in the Torah. He's talking about a shorthand of being a proselyte of Judaism. And then uncircumcised would be uh, a Gentile or a non-Jew, a non-proselyte, and or someone who's just not a Jew, okay? And that's basically all you need to know. Now, also in Tim Haig's commentary, and I think this is important, uh, this is out of uh, uh, a Talmud discussion, uh, Sanhedrin 10.1, and here's the issue at hand. It's a theological issue. All Israelites have a share in the world to come, as it is said, your people also shall be all righteousness. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Let me translate just a little bit. After the first Passover, the Israelites come out of Egypt and they go through the Red Sea and Yahweh gives them the Torah at Sinai. And this whole thing is uh, the birth of a nation. And the Jewish religious leaders uh, thought that the covenant that was given at Sinai uh, was to create this nation and th these were, were Yahweh's special possession people, and they were. But what they had done was they said or thought that uh, you had to be that people to uh, have a share in the afterlife. And so uh, you have two sorts of laws that we need to always be thinking about when we read the scriptures. Law number one is just what is written in the actual Bible. That would be um, uh, what I would say is just regular Torah, okay? Written Torah. But then there's oral Torah. There was a whole tradition of Torah that was oral other than scriptures, and it was rabbinic, came from the Sadducees and uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and so forth. And so the oral tradition basically stipulated that you had to be a part of the Jewish community, the, the Israelites that came out of Egypt, to have a share in uh, the afterworld. And in, in, sen in a sense, that's right. Um, in Romans 9, 10, 11, I learned, for example, that I've been grafted into the commonwealth of Israel um, by faith in Yeshua, okay? But in oral tradition, the Judaizers were saying that you had to um, be uh, a, you had to be circumcised, you had to become ritually Jewish in order to be a part of uh, the remnant of Israel and have a part in the afterlife. And that's why the issue in Acts 15 is all about circumcision. Anyway, the Apostle Paul is like, whoa, whoa, whoa this is not, not cool, not right. And you know, for them, is a really big issue. In Acts 15, you read about those four things they say for those Gentiles to um, uh, stay away from. And the reason that those four things are given is that the, the, the Jewish people felt that there was really only one way that you could be, I don't know, excommunicated from Israel, and that was that you began to worship other gods. And in shorthand, that would be called idolatry, because there's only one God, and don't go worshiping other gods. So the people in Galatia, you know, they had temples to all kinds of other deities everywhere. And there's a sense in which the Jerusalem Council did agree with the Judaizers in that, right, you can't be idolatrous. 
No, you don't be you don't need to be of the circumcision to to make yourself a Jewish proselyte, but you certainly shouldn't be worshiping other gods. And so abstain from those four things that were associated with idol worship in, you know, pagan arenas. Come out of that and worship the one true God, the God of Israel. So that's really the situation that that Paul is dealing with. So if you look in Galatians chapter one, I'm not gonna read it to you. You could just read it slowly after I'm done here. Uh, there is uh, in verses one through five, Paul goes through an introduction. Um, he has established churches, uh, followers of Jesus in Galatia, and he's concerned about them. And then in verse four, uh, Paul emphasizes uh, sub substitutionary atonement. Um, he wants to deal with the, the sin issue, okay? It's not about whether or not you're a, a proselyte to the Jewish community. It's about have you dealt with sin uh, and repented and recognized that uh, Jesus, our Passover lamb, has died on the cross for our sin. And then Paul, in verses six through 10, talks about this perversion of the gospel. And he says that, hey, uh, some of you are becoming proselytes to Judaism. And that whole rigmarole is a false gospel. So that's verse six. In verse 10, Paul highlights the tension between pleasing God and pleasing the religious leaders. You know, Paul right here is establishing his credibility. And Paul, um, you know, he's fighting against the same things uh, I think I fight against, and that is mainstream uh, churchianity. And Paul is saying, you know, bottom line is I'm not going to, even though I was raised in Judaism, I'm going to part ways with uh, uh, their false gospel and I'm going to tell you the truth. And it's hard for Paul. And then Paul defends his ministry um, in verse 14. Uh, Paul says, look, I was a rising star in Judaism, uh, but, Acts 9, uh, Yeshua got a hold of Paul on the road to Damascus. Uh, Paul then spends ample time in Arabia, and then after that stint, he, he spends uh, 15 days with Peter. He spends some time with James, uh, the brother of Jesus, and that's in uh, verses 17 through 19. So then we get to the beginning of the meat of the issue. I'm just gonna go through the first four verses today. So in some manner, this relates to the Jerusalem Council. Um, I'm gonna say it's probably beforehand, but it's the same issue. Then after an interval of 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. Now, Titus is going to become one of the key players because Titus is not a Jew by birth. He is the quintessential Gentile who has placed his faith in Messiah Yeshua. So now in verse 2, um, Paul once more is going to uh, submit his understanding of the gospel. Um, and he's going to do this in, in private. Um, there isn't an indication yet that this is... Uh, um, the formal Jerusalem council. So here's how it reads. It was because of a revelation that I went up and I submitted to them the gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, but I did so in private to those who were of reputation for fear that I might be running or had run in vain. And so Paul has established these churches in, in Galatia. They've accepted uh, Yeshua by faith, but there are people um, who... Uh, are submitting to oral Torah in, in one way or another, and they're telling them that they need to be circumcised, which is code, again, for becoming a Jewish proselyte. And they're trying to be saved uh, in like these two ways, both by faith, but then reverting back to this, this um, works righteousness salvation. Now, notice I put salvation, works righteousness salvation. The issue here is justification. The issue here is salvation. Uh, we're not talking about sanctification. You see, the role of the Torah or God's law shifts in a person's life. Before you meet Jesus as your Savior, need, you need to be informed that you are in need of a Savior, that you have sinned, that you're depraved. And so 
it's it's a curse to you. It, it's like it, it it says if if you don't if you don't take care of this, I mean, not a good outcome for you. But once you put your faith in in Jesus, what happens is now the Torah becomes instructive for you in how to live in righteousness. In other words, how to press into the narrative of God, how to do right living. There isn't a person in my world that doesn't who's a Christian, a sincere Christian that doesn't want to respond to God's grace. And you, everyone has a law. You go to church, you pray, you meditate, you um, try to be in solitude, you fast. These are all things that you do. But I think people try to get their list of things to do only out of the New Testament, which is incorrect. We need to be looking at the whole Bible as something that informs us on righteous living. No one's trying to earn anything here. It's just, we want to walk in life now. And so we engage in the practices, our instruction that our Heavenly Father has given us that, that we might walk in life. Verse three, but not even Titus who was with me, uh, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So it's not that Titus wouldn't have been circumcised, uh, but he wasn't compelled to be circumcised because he was with Paul and Paul, uh, was pretty clear with him and Titus got it, is that the this code here is that Titus didn't need to be circumcised for the purpose of becoming a Jewish proselyte. Now, um, at some point, not by compulsion, but if a male wants to be circumcised uh, because his heart is convicted and he wants to um, shave off that part of his body um, to symbolize that um, uh, he, he wants to be um, identified as part of that, part of that Abrahamic covenant um, in his flesh. Uh, yeah, that'd be a right reason to do it, but uh, not for the purpose of salvation. It's not, it's not like that. In verse four, Paul talks about the liberty in Christ, and I'm gonna end here. But it was because of the false brethren secretly um, brought in, who had sneaked in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, in order to bring us into bondage. Paul was with people at some point, um, with people in Galatia, Titus was there, and you know, all these little you know, nitpickers were trying to uh, say, you know, these people need to become legally Jewish. And the Apostle Paul says, no, you guys just don't, don't get it. Um, all of the Torah uh, pointed to Jesus. Um, yes, uh, let's observe the law, but not the letter of the law. You see, the whole idea is that we have a relationship with our Messiah, that we walk in his ways because it's being written on our hearts. And that's the difference between doing something by the letter of the law, which would be legalism, but then doing something by the spirit. You know, you can do that. I can, I can give Amy flowers because, um, you know, this is what good husbands are supposed to do. And I just do it right? But then I can give Amy flowers because, yeah, that's what good husbands do, but it's more of an expression of what's going on in my heart. In other words, that heart change has been there. In verse four, this, this whole liberty, Paul is never, as we go on, go on in Galatians, you'll see that Paul is not anti-Torah, but what he is anti is anti becoming a Jewish proselyte in the modality of the letter of the law. And Paul comes strongly against that. That is not the gospel. So keep all that in mind and uh, I will see you in two weeks.